Let's add five different ways of 2D top-down player movement. Alright, we found ourselves back in Unity once more, and in this tutorial we're going to be talking about five different ways of a player movement basically in a top-down game. Now for this, I highly recommend you make a completely empty new project over here, and what we're going to do is we're going to import something with a Unity package. Now you can either download the package with or without code, and you can also take a look at the GitHub repository, so each project will always have a GitHub repository associated with it. So this is the Unity package, and you can import it by clicking on assets over here, import package, custom package then you navigate to wherever the package is saved you select it it open and it's going to import a bunch of things so we are going to need all of them simply make sure that all of them are selected and hit import and it's going to import all of the different things that we're going to need this is both a scene and some assets and a few other things any warning you get here so anything with an exclamation mark should in theory be able to be ignored the most important thing is that if you get an error that might not be as easily ignored but in theory you shouldn't be getting any errors and what you can do is you can go to this five ways of movement double click on this and it already finished scene will open for you now the only thing that it does not yet have is the code for the movement but it basically has you know a nice little scene over here a little bit of a character a player over here and it already has the player movement script attached so you don't need to do anything except for change the player script right here which we're going to do right now so for that we're going to double click on the player movement script over here which is going to open visual studio 2022 community edition and here we have it and now we can basically well add certain things to it now as i've alluded to we're going to have five different types of movement and to basically control which movement we're using we're going to make a public enum and we'll call this the movement type over here and this enum is going to have the first one the first element of this is going to be the rigid body velocity. That's the first type of movement. The second one is the rigid body add force. That's going to be very, very interesting. Sometimes it suggests things to us over here. In this case, that is not correct. We actually want the vector move towards as the next enum. Then we want the transform translate. And then the last way to do this is the direct position change. Now, there might be a couple of other ways that you can also do movement. I think these incorporate... I think like 80 to 90% of ways to basically make movement in 2D happen. There could feasibly be some other ways. Also quite important here, the movement here is continuous and not discrete. Discrete basically just means if you were to always move one tile, that's not what happens. Here you basically can continuously move and assume almost any position. There are some more fields that we are now going to need. The first one is going to be a private float and we're going to call this the speed over here. We're going to set this to three. And what we're going to add over here is we're going to make this a serialized field. This is a serialized. So the reason why we're doing this is because if we add this and make it private, we're going to be able to access this in the inspector. You can actually take a look at this. So if I save this by hitting control S, you can see this turned green. So now we have saved this and I move back to Unity. First of all, it might reload some stuff. That's totally fine. And here are warnings like this is never used. That's also totally fine. If we click on the player, on the right side, you can see there's the speed variable that we've just created and we would be able to change it right here. And then if we were to jump into the game and change it there, we would actually be able to change it live during the gameplay, which is really, really cool. But for the time being, there's a couple of other things that we need, and that is going to be a rigid body 2D over here. So I'm going to navigate to this, hit the tab key to autocomplete. I'm going to call this the body here in this case. We also are going to need a private vector 2. This is going to be the axis movement. I'm going to explain this in a, a moment when we're getting to it. And then I have another serialized field. And that's going to be a private movement type. It actually suggests this to me. That is absolutely awesome. It is indeed correct. I want a movement type. And I want to initialize this to the movement type of rigid body velocity. So we're just going to set it to the first one over here. And that's going to be awesome. Now in a normal model behavior, we have a start method and we have an update method. The start method here, as you can see, is called before the first frame update. And we're going to use this to basically set the body. So the body is going to be equal to exactly what is suggests here. Again, get component and then the rigid body 2D. This is going to look for a rigid body 2D component on the player or more accurately to whatever game object this particular class is attached to. So if we once again go back here and we go to the player, we click on the player right here in the inspector, you can see the different components are the transform, the sprite renderer and the player movement component. For this, we are going to need to add a rigid body. So click on add component. You can start typing rigid body and we want to use rigid body 2D. That's quite important. And the only thing here we want to change is the gravity scale. We want to put that to zero. And with this, the script over here is going to be able to find this rigid body and then change certain things to it and apply certain forces or add the velocity, right? So basically the first two movement types. Now let's start with the rigid body movement types. 
These two are actually going to be done in a different method, and that is the fixed update method. If you start typing this, you can see it actually suggests this to us, and we can tap to autocomplete again. And the reason why we're using the fixed update is because rigid body is physics based, and basically everything that's physics based it, as a high level overview is something you want to have in the fixed update method. So what we're going to ask is we're going to ask if the movement type is equal to the rigid body velocity. That is exactly right. And if this is the case, then we want to call a custom method. We're going to just start typing in the rigid body velocity over here. And this arrow we can fix by, we can hover over this and show the potential fix. And we're just going to generate this method. This sometimes makes it just way easier to do this if you just write out, okay, what is going to be the name of this? And of course, it would be awesome if you can write this correctly as well. That would be amazing. There you go. So the rigid body velocity is going to be the first movement type, right? So for this, what we're going to have is we're going to say the body dot velocity is going to be equal to the axis movement but this is not quite right because first of all we want to normalize the axis movement basically as you can see if i hover over this it actually tells us that this returns the same vector however with a magnitude of one this is going to normalize the speed and then we can multiply this by the speed that we've defined right here the second type of movement which is going to be the rigid body at force also happens in the fixed update method so this is once again going to be if movement type and then this in this case we're not saying unequals we actually say is equal so you can see movement type equals movement type rigid body at force if this is the case we want to say we want to call the rigid body at force method over here we're going to hover over this show the potential fix and then we're going to generate that method over here i'm just going to switch this about so that i have the first method basically defined first and then the second type defined second and so on and so forth and this is going to work by using body dot add force and we're going to add the force of the axis movement, this is correct. However, we're going to multiply this by the speed. And we're going to say the force mode over here is going to be impulse. You can, of course, change this as well. And you will find that there's a little bit of a different behavior. But it, this is a very interesting thing. So using the impulse, uh, you're going to see that this is very hard to control, but it is kind of fun. And it can be sometimes usable for 2D top-down movement. Let's get to the update method. And the first thing we want to do is we want to set the axis movement over here. Because right now, there's actually no input happening. So even if we were to start, nothing would happen because axis movement is always zero because we're not using it. And this is going to be equal to axis movement. And what this is going to be equal to is axis movement.x is equal to input. So this is going to be the input class right here. Dot get axis raw. And we're going to pass into this the string horizontal. Make sure that this is written correctly with an uppercase H and that it's well, basically written correctly. You can then duplicate this line by hitting control D. I'm going to now change the Y axis movement here to the vertical raw axis. And this way, we're going to get an input from minus one to plus one on X. If we press left or right and a minus one to plus one for Y, if we press from, you know, down to up, basically, that is the idea of the raw axis input. And that is going to be used for all of our movement types. Now we're going to get three new if statements here in the update method because now we're going to use the move towards the translate and the position change movement types, which are no longer physics based. They are sort of position based, so we can add them in the update. Let's first of all add the three if statements and then we're going to see. So there's going to be if movement type is equal to two, movement type dot vector move towards. If this is the case, then we're going to do one thing. And then what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to select this Press Ctrl D twice to duplicate it. And very important that we do not forget to change this. This is going to be the if transform translate. And then here we want to say direct position change. And once again, just tap to autocomplete it. And there we go. In the first one, I want to call the vector move towards method and be sure to not accidentally hit the autocomplete over here, hit the escape key, because there's a, there's some visual scripting that is very closely related to the name over here. This is going to be the transform translate method. And the last one is going to be the position change method. There we go. And once again, hover over this, show the potential option and generate that method. Same over here, potential fixes, generate the method. And over here, potential fixes uh, generate the method. I'm just going to select them, control X to basically cut them out just so that I have them here at the bottom of the file in the correct order. So we're going to have the vector move towards first, then the transform translate. And the last one is going to be the position change over here. There we go. And then we have everything set up properly. The vector move towards, how is that going to look like? Well, it's going to take the transform dot position over here and it's going to set this to vector two dot move towards. So it's going to use the move towards method over here. And what you need is the current position, the target position, and then the max distance that each time this move towards method is called, this is going to take. 
So the current position is, of course, transform.position. The target is going to be transform.position plus whatever the axis movement is. And then the step is going to be speed times time dot delta time. Now here, you're going to get an error because in this case, the position is a vector three, while axis movement is a vector two. Now, luckily, we can cast a vector two to a vector three. So we can add parentheses over here and we can put in vector three. And this is going to cast the axis movement from a vector two to a vector three, allowing us to basically add them together. And now here in the speed time dot delta time, why are we doing this? The reason why we're doing this is because when you think about where this is called, this is called in the update method. Now, the update method is called once every frame. And by basically multiplying our speed by time dot delta time, we're going to make this frame rate independent. The general idea would be that if we were to just do speed, if someone has a absolutely beefy PC and runs this game 500 frames a second, this is going to be very fast, right? Versus someone who can only run the game in 20 frames a second, they would be really slow. Therefore, usually you want to multiply this by time dot delta time. This is not always strictly necessary, but in general, this is a good thing to keep in mind. There's of course way more nuances to this, but for the time being, this is going to be hopefully a good enough explanation on why you need this. The transform translate method, the fourth type of movement is going to be calling the transform again and then calling the translate method. And the translate method, if we hover over this, you can see it both moves the transform in the direction as well as the distance of the translation. What does that mean? We're basically going to say that the direction we want to go in is just axis movement. That makes absolute sense, right? That's the direction. But then we also can scale that vector by a certain amount, which is going to give you the speed. So we can say times speed times time dot delta time, which is also going to add the speed. In theory, the translate over here almost does the same thing as we're doing explicitly in the transform position over here, but it is a little bit of a different way to doing it. And then lastly, we can also change the position explicitly. So that's going to be transform.position. And we're going to say plus equals the axis movement. And it actually suggests this to us, which is absolutely amazing, which is going to be the axis movement times time.delta time and then times the speed over here. But once again, we have to cast the axis movement to a vector three. So we're going to add the parentheses over here and we're going to add the vector three casting from a 2D vector to a 3D vector. And thus we have all five different ways of movement added over here and we can take a look at all of them. Let's save this hitting control S and then let's go back to Unity. Sometimes it has to take a moment to reload over here. And then under the player, we can see that we can basically select the different types of movement. We're going to start with the rigid body velocity. So in theory, once everything is done and the script is correctly written, you can hit the play button over here and we should be able to well jump into the game. And if I now start pressing WASD, you can see I can move around. That is absolutely awesome. If I change the speed over here to, for example, seven or something like that, I'm going to move around way faster, as you can see. Let's change this back to three. Let's then choose the vector move. We're going to take a look at the add force at the end. So the vector move towards, you can see it is fairly similar to the last one. And then we yeah, got the transform translate. It is fairly similar to the last one. And the last one is the direct position change, which is also fairly similar. When you're in rigid body velocity over here, right? If you take a look at this, the player is sort of jittering a little bit, right? That is a very interesting thing that you will be able to find. And if I were to change this again to, for example, the vector move towards the jittering here is no longer the case. So this is one thing we are using the physics system to move something might result in, you know, consequences like that. So that is one thing to keep in mind, but it is very important that you know all types of different ways that you can, well, basically use movement and, and apply movement. And then here for the last movement type, the add force, if you hit the A key, look at this. You're going to like zoom off the freaking screen. Uh, this is incredibly hard to control. Uh, and basically, yeah, it's just going to add some sort of uh, impulse movement. So this would be an interesting thing to add to, I don't know, something like a pool ball or something like that. But uh, yeah, it is incredibly hard to control. And uh, I don't think I will be able to get this guy to stop anymore uh, unless I change the movement type. But there you go. That is five different types of movement. As previously mentioned, the code as well as the Unity package as well as a GitHub repository are all linked in the description below. So every type of asset is basically available for you to take a look at, including the GitHub repository. And the GitHub repository is actually a very good thing to mention because in this video, I'm going to show you how you can set up your Unity project with GitHub. Hope to see you there. So yeah.